If you've been with us for Modules 1 to 3, you now know why CZT technology and early clinical evidence demonstrate the potential for SPECT nuclear cardiology. In this segment, we explore areas of research interest that will enable this technology to be used in routine clinical care and diagnostic workups. Measurement of the myocardial flow tracer in the bloodstream is very important for obtaining accurate results. By using an injector, it's much more repeatable, and so we get less uncertainty or less variability in the measured results. Another consideration is the speed at which the radioactivity is injected into the patient. Because it is very important to obtain an accurate measure of the blood concentration of the tracer, you need to sample the injection as it flows through the blood. A fast injection is easier to perform with a manual injection, but requires increased temporal sensitivity from your camera. Alternatively, using a slow injection, the temporal sampling requirements are not as high. However, it is a little more difficult to maintain a consistent injection from patient to patient, and thus how this affects the reproducibility of the test is currently uncertain. Because of this, investigating fast or slow injections is still an area of active research. There are two different types of radioisotopes that are commonly used in tracers with SPECT imaging and myocardial perfusion, thallium-201 and technicium-99M. The technicium tracers have the advantage of giving us better count rates. They also have a decreased dose to the patient as compared to thallium. However, these tracers physiologically do not behave as well as thallium. Both one-day and two-day protocols are possible for myocardial perfusion imaging with SPECT. Two-day protocol, the advantage is that the injections are done on separate days, and so the activity is completely cleared from the patient before the second injection is performed. With the one-day protocol, the advantage is more convenient for the patient. It's a single visit to the hospital instead of two, and it is possible through using measurements prior to the second injection to perform a mathematical correction for the residual activity. Traditional cameras have been used in the past in an effort to do myocardial flow imaging with SPECT. However, they suffer from several disadvantages compared to the new dedicated systems. One of the issues is that the camera needs to rotate in order to acquire enough information to reconstruct a three-dimensional image. The time that it takes to do this rotation decreases temporal resolution. With the dedicated systems, they are stationary or almost stationary and this allows a rapid acquisition of all of the information needed to do 3D imaging. This greatly increases their temporal sampling capabilities. As a result, we can image more accurately, more quickly. These new cameras also have much improved sensitivity, which means we have more counts to work with in terms of reconstructing our images. That, combined with the new reconstruction algorithms, which pull more information from the acquired data, allow us to reconstruct better images at each time point in the dynamic series. Because of the stationary nature of these cameras, the protocols are very easy to implement in the clinic, much closer to what we would use, for example, in PET imaging, as opposed to what is needed to be done with a traditional camera. With the traditional camera systems, the approach to reconstruction and also the acquisition protocol itself is often more complex, sometimes requiring multiple sequential rotations of the camera. Radiation dose is an important consideration with any test that uses radiation. Philosophically, you want to have the lowest radiation dose possible. For this study, we chose to use the radiation dose that's used widely across North America, which is approximately 10 millisieverts. Having chosen the radiation dose, then it allowed us then to determine the doses we would use for injection at rest and stress. So using these doses, we're now validating our, our technique in patients comparing spec blood flow measurements to PET blood flow measurements. Going forward though, we will want to reduce dose. And there's many ways to reduce dose. In our pig model, we've already looked at reducing dose by simply using the original data and using effectively half the data and obtain similar results to what we did obtain with full data. The other approach is to look at stress-only imaging. This is the direction many labs are going, where you simply do the stress dose and imaging and make a decision whether or not you need the rest dose and rest imaging. If you decide not to use the rest dose and imaging, you reduce the radiation dose. And this is possible in about half the patients. The problem presently though is, is being certain about how normal the stress study is. 
If you added myocardial blood flow, you'd have more certainty. So stress only would be a good way to go. You would do your stress test, your stress imaging, add the blood flow, and your certainty about the stress study being normal or abnormal would be greater. So in terms of dose considerations, it looks like our technique works with usual doses. And with various tweaking, I think we can reduce the dose to probably half the usual dose, which would be around five millisieverts. Now to put that in perspective, background radiation is around three millisieverts throughout most of North America. We want to show that adding blood flow data to the spec data will result in a, a report that would be more useful for prognosis for a given patient. So this technique of measuring blood flow with SPECT has great potential. A lot of the work has been related to the software development. The software development is necessary to improve image quality and then use the high quality images to model blood flow to derive numbers. Glenn Wells has worked closely with GE Healthcare and Haifa to develop the software and to make modifications as need arise. So by working together, we have a software package that works very well and gives us a reliable, reproducible data. As the evidence builds, one thing becomes undoubtedly clear. Nuclear cardiology has tremendous growth potential. Most importantly, it presents a greater likelihood of positive results for patients who are unknowingly at high risk of cardiac arrest. Helping to identify these patients early and reducing the risk of future cardiac events is the utmost priority for researchers at University of Ottawa Heart Institute, as well as many other leading institutions around the world. Together, we are building confidence in diagnostic results, finding elusive multivessel disease and improving SPECT sensitivity, driving growth across nuclear cardiology, helping participating institutions differentiate themselves and analyzing previously unexplored benefits. There is still much to be learned and explored before this application becomes the new standard of care. But the data is promising, the results are positive, and the research is inspiring. Groundbreaking medical changes can take place if we join forces and collaborate on research applications, such as SPECT nuclear cardiology, that have the ability to help people live healthier and longer lives.